Hi, I'm Natalie Bouchard, and you're listening to Inside NC Labor, a podcast designed to inform and educate North Carolina citizens on the role that the Department of Labor plays in state government. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to Inside NC Labor. I'm Dolores Questenberry with the Communications Office. The reason we started this was to introduce the public to the North Carolina Department of Labor because we've noticed that so many people really don't know what we do. One of the responsibilities we have is to inspect the amusement rides across the state. And today we gave the media across the triangle a first look at the ride inspection process. We actually went behind the scenes. And so we thought it would be interesting to take you all with us to the Midway and share some of the interviews that we had out there with our podcast listeners. So now we're right here at the State Fair. We're in front of one of the rides and then we have Eric White, one of our inspectors. He's actually a supervisor. So tell us exactly in the ride inspection process, what, what happens? Tell us what you do first and how you work around the ride. Well, normally we'll start with the outside perimeter some people will start in the center and work their way to the outside myself i go from the outside to the inside and i'll do the perimeter then i'll do the foundation then i'll do the structure itself then i'll do the individual tubs and as you go around the structure you're probably going to check your electrical your hydraulics your controllers Uh, it's just a a logical common sense kind of way of, of completing everything in a way that I can follow through each time. Exactly. Now the grounding is really important. The grounding goes back through the five wire system. The ride does not have a ground at the ride. It goes back to the generator plant. The the generator will be grounded. That's one of the first things we check before they put power to the rides is to make sure the ground's in place. Great. What about this particular ride? This, there, most of these rides are brought in on trucks, correct? Yes, ma'am. So this one is sitting on its trailer. Yes, ma'am. So will it shift at all? Can no, you address that? Uh, no, the, the shifting is, like I said, back to that foundation that I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. They'll bring these in on a trailer. Typically, a lot of them are, they'll nest or cradle so that they compact on, on, the, on the trailer itself. Some of them take more than one trailer. They'll have a second trailer for more parts. But once you get your foundation leveled out, then the stresses should be equal across the board, and, and the ride shouldn't shift. It shouldn't shift. Okay. And, and then if you have, you know, substantial rains like it's dry right now. Yes. If you had a hurricane come through, once they began to operate for the first day or two, they'd have to keep a close eye on the foundation probably every other hour, every hour, to make sure there wasn't no settling. And if there was settling, then they'd have to adjust for that. And then we often say that you all look at every nut, bolt, and pin. Usually there's more than one of us, so no one individual is going to see every nut, bolt, and pin. Mm-hmm. But we do go over the entire ride, and we would like to think that every nut and bolt is looked at, but no one individual sees every nut and bolt, because if it did, it would be too time that consuming. That makes sense, yes. so, so normally, uh, like, I'll come in, depending on who I'm working with, I may do the foundation work, the perimeter and the foundation. And while I'm doing the, the perimeter and foundation, he may go over to the tubs. Now, depending on different rides, like the wheel, that won't work because they got to continually move the tubs around to inspect new tubs. I could have one guy going through the tubs themselves, uh-huh. and that way we're not both doubled up on the same thing. Right. Now, he should check every nut and bolt to everything he looks at, mm-hmm. and I should be checking every nut and bolt. It's the stuff I'm looking at. Yeah. So in the end, every nut and bolt should be looked at. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, how are you? Great. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this about our boiler inspectors. They actually come out to the 
North Carolina State Fair and look at some of the rods because some of the rods have these air compressors. That's correct. Yeah, they um, uh, a lot, some of the rods have a what we call air tank or an air receiver, which is considered a pressure vessel. It's under pressure when these rods are operating. So we come out to make sure that they're in good working condition. They have all the safety that are on safeties that are on them between a, uh, a pressure gauge and the relief valve, and we check to make sure that those are all good. We work with the amusement guys and elevator guys, and uh, you know they uh, work with them and, and go out there to make sure that they're safe and nothing will you know uh, cause problems not only ride wise that they do but also on the pressure side that we are concerned about all right so tell us how many rides out here have an air compressor right now for in our uh, what we have on our, our list to do is uh, three rides but two one ride has two air tanks and then each other ride has a couple you know one associated with it um, Tom and Tommy said that they may have a couple more that are new this year that we haven't done yet so obviously we'll do the first initial one when we see those so like I said we work well, good with them to, uh, you know, figure out which ones need an inspection and which ones don't for, you know, our purposes okay. of inspecting pressure equipment. So. Great. Now, and Jeremy is the assistant bureau chief That's for correct. Yep. Bowler Safety Bureau. That's right. And we're just... So excited yeah, to see you out here. Yeah, we just happened to bump into Yeah, I've been in contact with Tom and Tommy about getting out here, and uh, we're coming, wanted to, you know, cut it, cut it a little close to getting when these things started, but want to make sure that they're safe on our end for what we, you know, meeting our rules and everything for uh, for the pressure and the, uh, the the vessel safety and, and for the air receivers for those. So, Great. Yep. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. We're still out at the fairgrounds, and we have Tommy Petty with us again. He's the Deputy Bureau Chief for the Elevator and Amusement Device Bureau. Steve Harden has a very interesting job out here. I want you to just tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, I kind of coordinate between the guys and everything that goes on as far as uh, the information. That, that I'm more like an information hub and uh, they send everything in to me and I uh, put it on the computer for all of our reports, all of our inspections, and uh, whatever information that they need, if they need something off the computer, uh, as far as um, the rides and their data, uh, then, then that's what I do. I get on the computer and I'll, I'll bring that up and I'll shoot it to them on an email or whatever they need. And I'm just, basically I'm here to assist them in all the inspections. Do you actually uh, certify, like produce the certification tickets for them or? I, I do not. They do their own. Mm -hmm. Only thing I do is register them on the, the documentation for the state on all the ALNs, which are the, the numbers. Okay, so, because each ride has a number? Each ride has a number assigned by the location where it is. But as far as a number for each ride, it is not. They okay. they're basically go by their serial numbers and by the name of the ride mm -hmm. on our ALNs. That's how they're listed. But uh, out here, they we go by the name and we put a state uh, tag on them that says if they are inspected. Okay. Now, for the listeners, they may not know the ALN stands for Advanced Location Notice. That's correct. So, what is that exactly? Though? The Advanced Location Notice gives us an idea of what the vendor is going to bring to our location, and that is what they use to pay for. Uh, they, in other words, they have to pay for our inspection mm -hmm. uh, in order for us to meet them at the location, wherever it is. It's got everything on it. Mm -hmm. The location of the uh, where the, the fair is going to be or the festival or whatever the situation may be. Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. That's great. Great. So I know Tommy's been out here for a little over a week now inspecting everything. So how many rides are inspected thus far? 84. Great. 84 out of uh, hopefully 100, a little over 100, 106. Six. 106 rides are going to be the NC State Fair, everybody. So it is the largest assembly of amusement devices for an 11-day fair. So that's a little fun fact about the North Carolina State Fair. So what else is happening out here, Tommy? Well, just this year we have the new giant wheel, I call it. Several other wheels. Actually, it's one, two, three, three other adult wheels or, or family wheels. 
We do have one uh, wheel in Kitty Land that's called the balloon wheel. So there's an abundance of wheels here this year. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Catherine Revels in the Communications Division at the North Carolina Department of Labor. As many of you know, there is an exciting new attraction at the NC State Fair this year, and that is the State Fair Sky Gazer. So while we were on location at the State Fair, we were able to catch up with the Sky Gazer manager, and here's our interview with him. My name is Clifford Lowe. I'm the manager of the Sky Gazer here at the North Carolina State Fair. Great. Thank you for joining us today. And so we're just going to get started with it a little bit. Um, the Sky Gazer is one of the newest rides at the fair this year. So do you have some facts on it? Uh, I know it's rather large, so I know that's what everybody's talking about. The, the Sky Gazer is 155 feet tall. It travels on 12 semi-trailers throughout the United States. It has 36 gondolas that carry six passengers per gondola. It has a little over a half a million points of light on it, all LED. Um, it takes roughly 14 people about four days to assemble the ride and about the same to disassemble it and take it down. It moves, this is the sixth spot this year that it has played. It has one more this year. It goes to Miami, Florida from here. Um, it weighs roughly 400,000 pounds erected sitting there in the air. And it's just a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And we actually have been able to take a ride on it. And it's a fantastic ride. It's very, so smooth. And you can see for roughly 15 miles on a really clear day. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Yes, that is true. I mean, ever every spot we go to, we have people that are amazed at the sight they can see on a clear day. We play the Wisconsin State Flare, and they can see the lake from the ride, and it's about wow. eight miles away, wow. something like that. That's neat. Cliff, will you tell us just a little bit about the loading of the ride? I think that's fascinating. The, the loading of the ride is quite unique on this particular attraction. Um, it, uh, you have to maintain a balance on it is how we word the wording for it. Um, you can't load every gondola at the bottom and then turn it because it won't it won't work that way. You have to evenly load the ride all the way around and then keep working your way up to get it to all five gondolas and load all of them at the same time. So it, it takes a process. You're distributing the weight. You're distributing the weight and you have to keep it so that the ride stays balanced so that it don't rotate and slide and hurt patrons when you're loading and unloading them. Right. So it has to hold itself. And the only way to do that is it has to be real close to balance. It's not a perfect balance thing, but it has to be, you have to pay attention to how it's loaded. Now, is that the case with all of the Ferris wheels? A lot of Ferris wheels are that way, yes. Okay. A lot of them, like you'll, you'll see us when we first start of the morning there's five stations mm -hmm. where we can load five different gondolas and it stops seven times. Mm -hmm. You'll see us load the first one gondola on the first go around. And then on the next one, depending on the crowd, the crowd dictates how many we load. If there's enough people to warrant it, then we'll load two gondolas mm -hmm. and then so on and so forth. It, the crowd tells us how many to load. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, that might sound stupid, but the crowd dictates to what we load and how many we load. Do you have to have a certain number on the ride for it to operate? I mean, I know that won't be an issue at the state fair because I'm sure the tickets are going to be like all sold out, right? But well, not really. I mean, we just we just like the ride to keep turning all the time because when it's turning, you know, then the people see it's moving, it's operating, it's open, so it's always moving. All right. And and what about the lights? I know they're programmable and they change they are, all the time. They are programmable. Um, there is each spoke has a controller, so there's 36 controllers, and each spoke is what each gondola is attached to. 
and there is one master and there is a cable that ties from every one that creates its own internet in, internet i think is the wording they use for that system for the lighting on itself so and then there is uh on each spoke there is i'd have to do the math i don't remember the exact number of points of lights on each spoke um and then each gondola has 60 lights under it that is colored specifically to that gondola and the uh, LED sideboard in the front is 32 foot long, 7 foot tall. Wow. So it's big. You can it, see it from a long ways it away. It is big. You can it's see really it from cute. a long ways <laughs> away. Um, and I, I like the fact that it's enclosed. Yes. Because that's the, unusual for The gondolas Paris. are enclosed, yeah. yes. I, Mary Catherine's afraid of heights, and yes. she wasn't afraid on this. No, one. I no. felt very secure, and and the ride was so smooth um, that lot, everything. A lot went. of people throughout the United States have commented on mm -hmm. that about this particular attraction. Yeah, it was a great ride. They are they are enclosed. Um, there is music that plays in them when it's operating. Mm -hmm. um, we try to keep it turned down so it's not blasting and blaring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Um, Six people per gondola. You have to be 32 inches tall to ride a ride. Anything between 32 and 42, you have to be accompanied with adult. Anything above 42 is you're on your own. Mm -hmm. And we do cut. We do pair people up. Not everybody gets to go by theirself. We put like if there's three people in a group and three people in a group, we'll put them six in a gondola together. So. You will be seated with other people. Good chance to meet people, right? <laughs> yes. There, there has been several people throughout the United States when they get off the ride that you hear them say, "Glad to meet you. Glad to know you." And that's awesome. Aww, that is that's awesome. great. So it does create new friendships. Yeah, great. Well, it's a fantastic addition to the Midway, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to ride it at night. Yes, at nighttime it's a different thing, right? Because then you get to see the night lights of the surrounding areas right. right and i bet it's just a really gorgeous view again so it is do you have anything else you want to add come out and enjoy it and have fun great thank you so much thanks so much for tuning in y'all remember your safety is our priority